Greetings, y'all. It's your Nock Piramata, and welcome back to another Golf Stories podcast. I'm Court joined here by PGA Tour caddy, Daryl Adden. Daryl, it's episode 26 now we are. Halfway there, halfway through the year. I mean, we're halfway there. We're going to keep doing that every week. It's, it's, it's rough, but we get it done somehow. Yes, indeed. Uh, and this is a special one because uh, next week uh, I'll be away. I'll be going to the Open Championship. So we're going to be doing double duty this week. So I guess it's suiting that we're pretty much at the halfway point and we're going to have kind of a reprieve next week from the pod. <laughs> yeah, this is like this is like a midterm. Yeah, so, we'll, you know, we'll we're halftime show. <laughs> throwing, it at, throwing it at you. Yes, indeed. Uh, but we got a lot on our hands. But uh, of course, as we do, we're going to recap last week. We had a lot going on. In fact, we had PJ Tour and Live uh, stuff going on, uh, their second event. Uh, but as far as the PJ Tour stuff, it was the John Deere Classic. Mr. JT Poston uh, following up the runner up of the Travelers with a win, wire to wire, no less. Um, I guess what's your your thoughts, Daryl? I mean, you were there. Uh, um, I guess I, I think last week, last week, I think putting was you know huge, and you see the guys at the top that like you know there were guys that can put the ball, and uh, definitely my guy definitely struggled. He sh- struck mm-hmm. the ball amazing, but definitely struggled with the putter. So you see the guys last week that did well, they're pretty hot with the putter. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I was about to ask how how did y'all do? Um, as far as I mean, I, uh, Thursday Thursday was pretty good when it came to ball striking. Just couldn't really make any putts. Uh, Thursday similar and just you know just not really mm-hmm. you know getting anything going. So just w- was definitely frustrating and ended up missing. But uh, we're here this week and Lexington to try to get after it. Yes, indeed, the, the Barbasol uh, Championship uh, is where y'all are at the alternate event this week. We'll get into. You even get into that uh, later. Uh, but yeah, JT Poston, uh, again, the three shot win wire to wire. Uh, how was the course playing? Was it, you said it was softer, I think, in the beginning of the week last week? It, it, it definitely played nice. It definitely played nice. It was, it was definitely out there for the taking. I mean, what was it, 20 something? 21 uh, under. Yeah. Yeah, 21 under. So it definitely showed that there's a lot of birdies out there. It's just about limiting the, the bogeys. Yeah. So again, definitely played how you think it's going to play. A typical John Deere classic, I guess. Yep, for sure. Zach Johnson open, Stricker open, whatever you want to call it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, second place, guys, Christian Bezadenhut. Uh, he's been putting his name up there from time to time. Good to see him. I think that's his best finish on the PGA Tour, so good to see that. Yeah. For sure. And uh, your guy, Emiliano Grillo, I think this gets him into the top 125, so seals up that card, as he always does. I mean, as he always does, you know, sneaky, that guy. Yes, indeed. The Scott superstar that's... Yeah, go ahead. Underrated. Yeah, he is. He really is. And, you know, um, he should get that second win uh, sometime soon, I imagine. He's too talented not to. Uh, and there's good signs of things to come for him, I'd, I'd imagine. Right. Uh, and, and that final group with uh, JT Poston with Scott Stallings, still is kind of searching for that that win since he, you know, it's like I said before when I picked him, he, it's interesting that his three wins came when he was, it was kind of a heftier kind of guy. And then now he's into the weight. Our, uh, you know, kind of the fitness thing. Yeah, and, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's like basically growing into it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, he's, I would say, more consistent, but there's just the wins just haven't quite come uh, just yet uh, under the fitness regimen. But, uh, you know, again, good showing, top five finish, nothing, nothing to scoff at there uh, for sure. Um, my picks, uh, Dylan Fratelli, a contender pick. Uh, you know, I mean, and, he was, he was, he was, you know, yeah, he was up there, but in uh, yeah, a podcast fashion, had a, had a bit of a ruling uh, that didn't go his way there. Uh, ball was in, I believe in a, in a tree inside the hole of a tree or something like that and didn't get relief. Um, but he did. Yeah. I think he, he finished double digits. Uh, so he had a decent week. So he hit the gala uh, started three over and I was like, Oh man, we was about to miss the cut, but you know, he rallied yeah, pretty he, good. He, yeah, he rallied well. Yeah, tied 16th. Uh, so that's a good showing for him. That that's that's something to to keep fighting to make the cut. Uh, basically on the number, I think he, he shot a 65 uh, to come all the way back to make the cut. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the John Deere Classic. Any any last thoughts on on the tournament, Daryl? It, it's for me. It's a really good tournament. I feel like guys can you know make their season there and kind of catch up or whatever they got to do. I'm, I'm 
one thing that stood out a couple of years ago, I think Russell Henley took second there mm-hmm. and basically saved the season. So that, that place can definitely, you know, make a break a season or kind of get you up there. Yeah, especially since it's it's not really the A players don't typically play there. Uh, you can, And it's, you know, it's a full field event, you know, and it's right in the middle of the schedule where everyone's, you know, form should be good and good rhythm. So I, I, I totally agree that it's a good place for, for guys to get their season going, uh, especially so late in the season now coming up to it. Um, as far as the other event, Live Golf, second event, Portland, Pumpkin Ridge, uh, what's your thoughts there? Brendan Grace taking home as the player win and the four aces, as we predicted, uh, did come up with the, the team win. <laughs> I mean, based on, based on paper, it's hard to beat that t- four aces team. Yeah. Like, let's be real here. That, that team is pretty strong. So I think even going into the week that they were definitely favored yeah. uh, and, and they took care of business. Yeah. My buddy actually went there that I played golf with and he said, it was very lively. It was amazing. He loved it all. You know, he's a golf fan, golf nerd. The, the only thing that he said that was a struggle was they weren't prepared for the amount of people on Saturday. So oh, getting wow. to the course was, was, was pretty tough mm-hmm. um, in the shuttle aspect. But since they combined the two courses, mm-hmm. uh, it was able, they were able to have more room for spectators. So it was more like, you know, you're able to roam free compared to if it was just a regular 18. Mm-hmm. like however like whatever course it was so you know they combine the golf courses mm-hmm. so it, that definitely helped for the whole shotgun and all that stuff but he, he he definitely said like moving forward he says it definitely looks good again the only thing that he uh the negative aspect would be is like the courses that they go to moving forward they need to be able to have the you know the shuttles and all that stuff yeah. the, the logistics basically. logistics of it all right getting used to all that <laughs> But yeah, so, I mean, one, it's got a lot of legs yeah. to it for sure. It seems like. And then you know Paul Casey signing, and yep. you obviously you're reading like Stenson might sign soon. Like there's there's rumors there, so definitely people are definitely attracted to it. Yeah, for sure. And I I mean I was I watched it and it was a uh, it was exciting, especially you know Brendan Grace and Carlos Ortiz were kind of dueling it out there late, and Dustin yeah. as well there, and uh, yeah, no it, Carlos it got, Ortiz won at that golf course like a couple years ago, like really? years ago, like you know, know like to get his battle technically promotion okay no well that that so, makes sense he was playing out of his mind until brendan grace just turned up turned it up a notch with that chip in on uh, i think 16 there um but i mean brendan Cler- grace is a class player uh, as we know a guy who's got the record for the lowest round in the open or in the majors in general yeah so, you know no, no surprises and that's back-to-back south african winners uh as far as individual winners for the I uh, live golf and I think they finished second place looking like that. Stingers. Stingers. <laughs> the Stingers. Yeah. yeah. So that really great showing by them and the fireballs, the third place finish, uh, Carlos Ortiz leading the charge on them. Uh, but yeah, man, exciting stuff. It, it definitely looked, uh, looked like fun. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, just a golf event. We'll, and everything. we'll, we'll yeah. see it. We'll see it keep going. I mean, it definitely, like I said, with all the concerts and stuff like that, that they have offered, uh, we'll see how it keeps on going. It's got it's got legs, that's for sure. That uh, yeah, a lot of momentum. Yep. So can't can't discount it. Um, but yeah, exciting stuff. Um, I guess we'll turn pages. Any last things from Live or the PGA Tour from last week? I mean, on to the next. On to the next. Here we go. And uh, speaking of next, what's next is the Scottish Open. So we go to. Really, this first time they're ever having this series uh, where it's the PGA Tour and Europeans who are really, uh, I guess, showing off their strategic alliance. Uh, so the Scottish Open, Barbasol uh, Championship, the Open Championship, and the Barracuda Championship are both a PGA Tour win and a European Tour win if you win it. So uh, it's a pretty cool thing that they're doing and uh, pretty exciting to see kind of a mix of different players in the fields and, you know, kind of unfamiliar names and, and familiar places sort of thing. Um, but I guess starting first with the Scottish Open, you can see uh, my background here. Um, I guess, what do you know about it, Daryl? It's at the Renaissance. Zero. Yeah. Zero. I mean, I, I think it's going to be exciting to basically like know more about it. Like this, this mm-hmm. whole, you know, post ancient thing. I'm still even, you know, not very mm-hmm. well versed in it as well. So like th- this next week is, is going to be interesting to see how it all works out and, just kind of be a part of it. 
Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, the Renaissance Club is where is the club that's hosting it. I think this is like their fourth or fifth straight year. They're doing it uh, for those at home. Don't know. It's 7,300 yards. So it's about standard length, I guess, for pros, you would say. Um, yeah. And I don't know. The, I've been looking at the winning scores. They've been kind of a mixed bag. Uh, 22 under won it the first time is that there and then 11 under the next year and then 18. Under. So it's, and I, I'm guessing as it does in Scotland where, you know, it depends on the weather as it does. Um, right. That's so, the defense. Yep. That is the defense. If a random spell comes through, then that's, what's going to stop you from playing good. And otherwise, if it's sunshiny and wonderful, you can shoot 60 mid sixties all day. If you're a pro, I'm sure. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have much experience watching the Scottish Open too much. I do know, like uh, Phil waking wanted, up for it. Waking up for it is is a tough part of it. Yeah, that. that is that is tough. Um, I do remember Phil winning it back in 2013, right before his Open Championship win, and I, it says Ricky won here in 2015. So there, there's a couple big name guys that I mean, Justin Rose won it in between them 2014. So it's a pretty big time event, I'd say, for the European Tour and. I mean, it, it is, and and it also gives you a transition for the for the open. You know, people yeah. acclimate with the time and stuff like that. Exactly, perfect little transition uh, event to kind of get you acclimated if you're playing the Open Championship. Uh, so, with that being said, I guess I'll get into my picks. Daryl will not be doing picks, so uh, don't come at him, bro. Please, <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. Uh, maybe maybe uh, another week when he's not on caddy duties. Uh, right. Yeah, but. Uh, as far as my picks, I'm going to go Dark Horse for the Scottish Open. I'm going to go Razinus Hogard. Mm, that, name is, that name definitely is always, you know, being seen for sure. Yeah, it's kind of like Games of Thrones type of name. <laughs> right. Razinus Hogard, 150 to 1. For those who don't know, he's a young European tour player from uh, Denmark. Uh, he's got a few, I think, three or so DP World Tour wins on his name already. And, uh, yeah, I think. You know, now that this is kind of, I guess, elevated status, you would say, I think he he's a type of player that uh, is going to, you know, come to play, so to speak. Um, and I think that perfectly transitions to a, my contender pick, who's another guy who just came off the DP World Tour last year, uh, Mr. Aaron Rye. Uh, I want to say, did he win? This? Solid player. He's a solid um, player, that guy. Yeah, he's sixty-five to one, so they they like his. Uh, his chances here. I want to say, did he win this one? Gosh, I, uh, this is how bad I, yeah, he did. He won the Scottish open in 2020. So, wow. Yeah. So there we go. I mean, good, good. I mean, great pick then. Yeah. So 65 to one, I think that's a solid pick. And, you know, like I just said, uh, it's a PJ tour event now too. So it kind of elevates it and, you know, makes you want to play a little harder for it. I would say. Yeah. Um, and then my winner pick, I'm going to do it, Daryl. I'm going to say Will Zalatoris gets his yeah. first win. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. Willie Zal. Uh, a, a dual win. Yeah, man. He's been, what, four shots basically away from. Oh, he's, he's, he's up there. He, he, I mean, at the end of the day, you know he's going to put himself in position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, uh, I think, what is he, 28 to 1 this week. And, man, like I said, four shots away from being, you know, four-time PJ Tour winner and three-time major winner uh, in the last, what, two years. Uh, so we know he's capable of big time uh, things, just needs to kind of crack open that W and uh, take the lid off. I mean, I think his only professional win is a uh, corn Ferry tour back in 2020. So we know he's capable. Just just get it done, you know, and uh, we'll see. I I'm excited, just like you, to kind of figure out more about the Scottish Open. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we'll go ahead and flip pages again, unless you have any last things on the Scottish Open. I I'm actually excited to, you know, like I said, it's, 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 it's dual and we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes. So definitely exciting. Yeah. It's something different. So that that's definitely nice to see. Um, so I'll flip pages to an even bigger event, a major championship, <laughs> the place I'm going to. Uh, I know. Saint you're you're going to have a lot of fun. Open you are gonna lot, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be one of these spectators. Hopefully. I don't know if it's, I'll be in the stands, but <laughs> it's come, it's come so fast. Cause it's yeah. like, you know, we were talking about it just, you know, a couple of months ago and all of a sudden it's here now. So it's yeah. definitely exciting next week. Yep. Yep. Can't, can't wait. Going to go Wednesday and Thursday. So uh, I'll try to bring one yeah. of my, uh, a knock shirts or something. So if <laughs> any of you listeners are there, please feel free to say hello. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah, it's the 150th Open. It's a big deal. It's at St. Andrews, the home of golf. Uh, I think most golf fans would know the story. Um, you know, shoot, this is where golf was invented, man. And, uh, you know, so much history throughout with the Open Championship. Of course, uh, last time it was here, Jack Johnson won. Uh, Louis who stays in before and then Tiger and, and John Daly, Jack Nicholas, Nick Faldo, all those uh, legendary names, uh, so so to so to speak. And uh, yeah, uh, Daryl, any thoughts on the Open Championship? It's a major, so the last major, Corey's I mean, last shot. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, you're excited to see like what Tiger, how what, what form he's coming in. And mm-hmm. Just <clears throat> again, if there is one that he might be able to get done, it could be this one, but. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely flatter than uh, the other courses played this year. Um, right. The biggest thing is weather. Uh, he played today at uh, the J.P. McManus Pro-Am, and uh, it was a little rusty. Uh, but, you know, it's good to see him. He did have some good swings, too. But uh, it's good to actually, you know what, those are good reps, whether in, whether he likes it or not. They're, they're reps in front of camera, in front of people, you know. So maybe shake the rust off there and get the good stuff out on the Open Championship. Um, any memories from uh, St. Andrews as far as like watching like 2010, 2015? Not, not too much because I mean, at that time I'm, I'm not waking up early enough. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's definitely the, the, the problem on, you know, my end. I think at the end of the day, this, this, this one is the one that for me is the least watched just because of the waking up factor. Mm-hmm. I got you. So, yeah. um, out of, out of the three. Out of, out of the three, out, out of the four, four out of the four, four majors, yeah, out yeah. of the four, but you know, yeah, yes, indeed. Any, um, anything, anything stand out to you? Like, I mean, I know you're going there, so I would just say, what, what, I mean, what actually, are you looking on, forward? on the contrary, is that uh, because of Tiger, I mean, Tiger's literally probably the only athlete I would do that for, but like waking up at four in the morning just to watch Tiger at, in the open gym, not just at St. Andrews, but in the open championship, right? Right, right, right. That I have a lot of fond memories of. Uh, whether or not he played good or not <laughs> you know his last win at the open championship was uh you know 2006 so it, it's been a while but you know he certainly contended in a good bit of him uh since then um but yeah i mean just the style of golf it's links golf so i guess that's something we we haven't touched on it's totally different from what we're seeing on the pga tour uh you, right. can, you can play six iron you can play a lob wedge uh right. I, I think what was interesting colin morikawa last year who is the defending champ said that, uh, you know, he just played his regular game. He, he didn't overthink it, uh, and, you know, that got it done. So I guess it's just to each their own. Um, you know, I I'd personally, I've never played too much Lynx golf, like, to this truest form, uh, mm-hmm. but I know for a fact I love being creative around the green. So I think that's always interesting to watch. And, you know, seeing it up close and personal will be really cool to watch uh, for me. Um, but, yeah, uh, I think uh, – we'll, we'll be looking – looking forward to your r- report back yeah <laughs> well that's when we'll be coming back uh the week after we'll, we'll show i'll share stories of my experience perfect uh, but as far as my uh picks i'm Let's gonna go uh i'm gonna go ahead and do it i'm gonna go ahead dark horse the guy who just won let's go brandon grace mm. 100 to one uh yeah we, we just talking about class player lowest champ lowest score in a championship in a major championship definitely Um, knows how to play that style yeah and uh you know hey he just won so why not coming off some momentum why not you know and uh yeah he'll follow up his uh, fellow south african again uh louis who's won here and came in second last time so yeah and that transitions to another guy who finished second last time around my contender pick mark leishman Mm. 65 to 1 Actually, been kind of kind of a quiet year for Leishman. Um, it has been, so I think it's time for him to step up. Yeah, um, like I said, came second here. Um, I know he can chip the hell out of the ball. I've seen him at the Zurich, and obviously, like I said, you know, contended in the Opens before. Um, yeah, and just a solid player, a guy who's really all he's missing is a major. So I think uh, this is time for for him to have a good time again at the Open Championship. And as far as my winner pick. It was tough. There was a lot of good names, and I just don't know. I don't know the weather, so we're like two weeks away. Right. <laughs> uh, but a guy that I that's been kind of low key. I mean, he's got two wins this season, but has been kind of low key, I guess. Xander Shoffley. 
Mm. 22 to one. Everyone's been kind of, you know, needling him for not winning. And then he gets the wins and he's been kind of people haven't really been hyping him up. I feel like, uh, since then. Right. So I don't know. He's again, another player that's, uh, it's time for him to get a major and it's time, you know, that's really all he's missing. Olympic champion, you know, WGC winner tour championship winner. You know, so it's time for him to get his major. Um, but yeah, those are my picks. He's 22 to one, by the way. Uh, Rory is the favorite. I was actually tempted, tempted to go with Rory. I know, I know you would like that, Daryl. Mm-hmm, I would love that. <laughs> I definitely would love that. I was very tempted because it feels like he's he's been due, uh, and I'll just give him a shout because I, I you know what, yeah, he Notable. probably is due, and <laughs> yeah, honorable mention. Um, but yeah, those are my picks for the Open Championship. Um, yeah, excited, and I will give you all the report back. Um, I guess we'll we'll turn pages once more. And we'll go back to this week's tournament, the alternate event. It's also a European Tour uh, event. Uh, the Barbasol. Yeah, Barbasol Championship. Um, Daryl's there. He's there with I'm Grayson here. Murray. Yeah, who actually won this event uh, <laughs> back in 2018, I believe. 17. 17, yeah. excuse me. Was it a different golf course? Yeah, they played in Alabama, I believe, mm-hmm. for those first three years. So now in Kentucky. Um, what can you tell us about uh, where are they playing at uh, this week in Kentucky? The Keenan Trace Golf Club. Yeah, it's... Uh... Right now, I mean, this week is, first off, always the hottest week of the year. And I think it's going to still repeat and uh, win that, you know, award. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's always 50% or 50% chance of, you know, lightning and rain. So definitely got to prep up for that Thursday through Saturday. It's looking like it. So Uh-oh. it is what it is. At the end of the day, somebody's got to win. So you just got to keep keep plugging away at it. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it's... uh. That's going to be tough, if it's, especially in the, I know the South has got to be anywhere in the South. It's humid as hell. And, you know, we're already it's, with it's, the heat. Yeah. It's definitely hot here. <laughs> <laughs> it made, it made last week look amazing. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I, I'll be praying for you. Uh, hopefully good. I, I'm looking forward to another good week from, from y'all. Um, yep. it's 7,300 yards. Um, I guess what would you categorize this course as? You you think bombers paradise or ball strikers paradise or you know? Solid? I think I I think it, it it plays pretty soft, so you're gonna have to make a lot of birdies. Guys are mm-hmm. uh, gonna hit a lot of fairways, so you know a lot of chances. I think in the twenty unders, you know, so it's it's that type of golf course. So you okay. gotta kind of get after it. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Uh, since they moved to Kentucky, it's been all in the twenty unders as far as yeah. the score. So. Yeah, looking for a lot of birdies. Like you said, it's it's going to be soft and rainy. Uh, I'll just make one pick. Uh, just keep us moving along since it is also is just an alternative event. Uh, uh, we'll go ahead and make just one single pick. No contenders, no dark horse. Uh, so who I'm pre- picking, predicting to win. It was tough to choose. A lot of decent names in the field. I'm going to say James Hahn. Mm, he's yeah. definitely trending. Mm-hmm. He's got a couple top tens as of recent and uh, top five here last year. So there's there's something in the water, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely um, good pick. Solid. I'm grasping at straws, really. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, James Hahn, I think, uh, usually plays good on tougher golf courses, longer golf courses, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think he's a, a, cla- a class guy as far as his play and get it done uh how do you feel yeah. about this week uh with with you and g murray he's definitely hitting the ball really well you know that, that that's that's not an issue we just gotta you know stay patient on the greens and you know get some putts rolling in get some confidence and hopefully start you know making a lot more pouring them in yeah that's really i'll just take so, the lid off yeah yeah, yeah. so uh we'll, we'll go from there yes indeed um you know, uh, y'all y'all do a practice round today or anything like that? Yeah, we played. We play, so today we played uh, the back nine. We played nine holes. And then tomorrow we're, we're going to play another nine holes. And then on Wednesday we're in the pro-am like late, like four something. Okay. We'll play another nine holes. And then from then we'll uh, start the event on Thursday. Gotcha. Busy, busy week for Daryl. Again, gracious of his time. We're getting his no, time. It's, always- it's great. It's great. Yes, indeed. And uh, so we'll move on from the Barbasol. 
uh, and we're going to go to another bee named uh, alternative event, the Barracuda Championship. Um, this is an interesting one because it is Stableford, uh, and it's in Reno. It's typically called the Reno Tahoe Open. I think people yep. know more is that. Um, lots of there's some decent winners of this. Gary Woodland won it. Jeff Ogilvy, Kyle Morikawa. Uh, so a lot of decent uh, players that play this and usually win it. So you know, don't sleep on it. Um, any thoughts on uh, the Barracuda Championship, Daryl? I mean. I'll be honest with you. I have a soft spot for the Barracuda Championship because it was the first PGA Tour event I've ever caddied in. Oh, wow. So yeah. it was the first like co-sanction or whatever you want to call it, like sanctioned PGA event. So right on. Uh, it was at the other golf course and uh, we made the cut too that week. And uh, like I said, so there is a soft spot for that place. Uh, it's in Truckee now at this place called Old Greenwood. It's about 40 minutes from Reno now. Yeah, okay. uh, definitely a lot easier walk compared to Montreux. Montreux was just mm. a beast of a walk. I, I love the golf course, don't get me wrong, but it was just mm. a beast of a walk. Uh, Greenwood is a lot, a lot easier to walk. Okay. So mm. for, from a caddy perspective, you like that. <laughs> I, I would imagine. Yeah. You can only appreciate the, the view so nicely. Uh, yeah. Some courses. Yeah. Um, I feel bad for the, the, the smokers, you know, when we're playing the other golf course, <laughs> uh, you know, not only are you in altitude and yeah, whatever. So it's a long it walk. Too. That, really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when did they, do you know when they played the, the Greenwood previously or uh, last two years ago was the first time. Okay. Gotcha. In 20, 2020, 20, 2020. Yeah. 2020 was the first time they hosted oh, it there. Okay. So, so Ricky so Rewinski won it then. Yeah. Yeah, and then last year was who was last year? Uh, Eric Van Royen won it. Oh last. yeah, yep, yep, and then yep. So yeah, it's always it like it says it's seventy five hundred at Old Greenwood Course, but of course they play in altitude, so it's yeah, just which miles. tip at least ten percent, and then plus you know, yeah. Yes, so that's that's I love this term. I love that. Uh, it's only, it does have an identity, and I love the fact that they went to a Stableford, which no, definitely it's awesome, which has been missed since you know before the international was a tournament that used to do that. And uh, any comments on that? Have you ever played in a Stableford tournament? No, I have not. I've yeah. not. I mean, at the end of the day, like the the goal is always to hit a tee shot on eighteen and be so far in the lead that you can just pick up. Yes, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that, that would. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's one of the things that's uh, the beauty of it you can make a double break they'll get worse and just pick up uh, yeah hen hence why they do that at the celebrity one in reno um i've never played in it I, there used to be a tournament around locally that did a stable third and i don't know i always thought it was an interesting i've always wanted to play i just you know never got the chance scheduling wise but i just find it so interesting i just bet it just like it makes you want to score and and really take some chances and make birdies yeah yeah so, um, you know, two points is a birdie and you feel like you can make up some ground. Um, a perfect example is my uh, pro, uh, Steve Lowry, my pro from uh, Pebble Beach, the first tee open. Uh, he came in second to Rich Beam way back when in the international. And I believe mm. he went, uh, he had a hole out in the back nine and a double eagle uh, and then had a putt for the win. You know, it was a one point deficit, like a 20 footer and just missed it. But uh I just recall it because, I mean, obviously, when you make a hole out and a double eagle all in uh, one back nine, no less. And I just remember Rich Bean being so so nervous. <laughs> uh, nail, nail biter for sure. Um, but, yeah, really interesting event. Um, I actually had Scott Piercy as my pick for the winner. But now to think about it, I mean, I don't see Sahit the Gala in uh, any of the fields. So I feel like he's probably going to play in this one. And mm -hmm. if he doesn't, obviously, get in the Open Championship, which I don't see him in the field. I think I'm going to go with Sahith again. I, I, you know, Colin Morikawa won here in 2019 and got, got the monkey off his back, so to speak. I yeah, feel like this get is, it started. Yeah, so I feel like this is a good place to uh, get the career going, get the, get the Ws rolling in. Uh, so I'm going to – Audible, I have Scott Piercy, who actually has a third-place finish here last year, and he's won this event technically before it was a stable for um, But I'm going to go with Sahith again. We're just going to keep going and until it happens. Love it. Love it. Let's get it. Let's finally get one in. 
the Monsi make us proud, man. You've been playing too good not to get one. So yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna break the bad. You know, it'd be so crazy if I just hit on all four of these <laughs> events. <laughs> the first time we do something like this um but yeah that is the barracuda championship same week as the open when i'll be gone um any last things any last things from these events i know you just said that the barracuda is your first event uh, ever but open championship barbasol you know scottish open yada, yada, it's yada, gonna yada. be i mean for every everybody it's gonna be a busy you know couple weeks mm-hmm. so i think it's just gonna be exciting to always have something to like look up and look forward to yeah so i think that's the nice part about these next couple of weeks yes indeed. so e- even for me like you can get off the golf course and eat, you can look not only what we're doing but somebody else you know the other tournament and so it's just it's always it's going to be a busy and busy busy tough but it's also a good yeah you know it, it's nice to have something something consistently going on uh i actually you know I just read uh, for the Scottish Open that Ian Poulter and a couple other live guys are going to get to play. Uh, I, I think it's just a temporary like stay. Grant they were granted a stay by a judge, so they're oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so they're actually going to get to play. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Yeah, that's, no, we'll definitely that's definitely some juicy stuff there. Yeah, so uh, I, I was kind of telling uh, my brother is like I think really what it's going to come to head is when players really want to play an event. And, you know, a term, maybe a tournament director is like, yeah, I'd like you to play an event. And then, you know, was the PJ Tour going to ban them or whatever? Or so right, right, right. From coming in. I mean, it's still early, so we're going to see a lot of stuff moving forward and we'll kind of see how it goes. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty, pretty big precedent. I know it's I think that's just a temporary thing uh, that's allowing them to play. But yeah, still very big nonetheless. Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting thing. Um, yeah, these are all tournaments that. uh I'll be keeping up with, of course. And like I said, the open championships are major. I, I'm going to be there. And it's, I don't know. I, I, for the longest time, uh, I think the Masters is the one I would want to win out of the major. But for the longest time, I said the open championship was uh, the major if I had to pick one to win is because of the history, uh, because of the style of play, uh, just so many different uh, factors that, you know, I, I just have such a great appreciation for uh, the championship, you know. All right the oldest of the four majors too. So there you go. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's, that's it, Daryl. I think we did it and we, we got through it all. We, we, we took care of business. Yeah. And record time. I think, I think we got it in pretty much the regular time we, we normally do it. So yes, indeed. Love it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, folks, uh, you know what to do below. Uh, let us know, you know, we got four events. We just talked about who's going to be the winner. Uh, yeah, I don't know if y'all can hear. There's some fireworks going on. Hope y'all had a good, safe Fourth of July going on with the barbecue or ice cream, whatever you got going. Be safe, and uh, I guess God bless America on that. Um, but yeah, agreed. Like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, you know your words mean something to us. Yeah.